<laughs> words are hard. Hey everyone, it's Crystal and Shannon, and we are going to go over the what the heck. Are Hello, we are the librarians. I'm Rika, and I'm Ariel, and we are taking over the blog today. Mwah. We are talking about headless books. That is, books that do not have heads, what? or they're just heads. And where does this trend come from? This is for the purposes of giving the re reader an idea of what might be in the book, but not like totally eliminating all of their huh. um, imagination as to what these people look like. So we're gonna each present a few books that we found were hilariously headless. So the first book that we're gonna discuss, uh, we both coincidentally picked Catherine Ash books. Um, she's a, a fabulous romance author who writes a lot of books that have no heads on them. I picked The Earl. Uh, I picked this because two reasons. One, it's got a bookish heroine, which I think is fantastic. And two, it's got a friends to, or a, an enemies to lovers trope in it. And that's my catnip. Bookish woman ends up meeting a handsome, wealthy, and brooding fellow. And um, they don't like each other, surprise, surprise. But uh, her sister gets kidnapped or goes missing or, you know, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Something. Something. And they have to do, they have to work together to help her sister and get her sister to safety. And along the way, they may or may not fall in love. This is another Catherine Ash. I loved a rogue. Oh. And I was interested in this book <laughs> because I went to the shelf and went, hmm, which of these books looks really cool? Hey, look, an orange dress. That popped out to me. Definitely. And Catherine Ash, as I soon found out, is a phenomenal. A phenomenal. Phenomenal <laughs> writer. This book tells the story of Eleanor Caulfield and her um, hot <laughs> gypsy boyfriend. Yeah. Not really boyfriend, but acquaintance. Person she grew up with and had a short romance with before he left for 11 years. <gasps> There he is. I would be done with that person. Yeah. Like if they left for 11 years, I'd be like, You're done. No. Bye now. And not if no other man in the entire world makes you feel the way that he <sighs> did. So they, um, he comes back after 11 years and she's like hot and bothered. And they end up trying to figure out who her real parents are. And there's a uh, prophecy that is to be fulfilled. And they end up traveling around trying to solve the mystery. Next up we have Libba Bray's Beauty Queens. Uh, this was very popular a couple years ago and it remains one of the greatest YA novels that I've ever read. The premise is 50 contestants in a beauty pageant get on a plane to go to the pageant and it crashes on a desert island and uh, things are not as they appear on this island. So um, why would they be? Right? There's sass, there's intrigue, there's the drama, there's an LGBT character. I can't remember, I think there's a trans character, but I might be misquoting. Um, but it's one of the greatest books ever, and it's got, I love the cover design, because you've got like the bikini, but then like the bullet lipstick, and the no head. Bullet, oh, I didn't even notice yeah. that. Isn't that clever? That's awesome. Back blurb is, welcome to the heart of non-exfoliated darkness. That's I awesome. love it. My next book is Losing It by Emma Rathbone. And I um, entered a Goodreads giveaway. Did you win this from Goodreads? I won this from Goodreads. So it is an uncorrected yeah. proof copy. Mm. So there might be slight differences in what you read than what I've read in here. So it is the story of Julia uh, Greenfield, and she has a problem. She's 26 years old, and she has not yet had sex. And she needs to fix that. We've all been there. Yeah. So she goes to live with her aunt <laughs> for a summer. Nice. And she is absolutely determined to lose her virginity. Gonna drop this that time. B card. Yeah. Drop it like a hot. So that is all about. That's what this book is all about. So one thing I discovered when I was searching for headless books, there is a whole Goodreads list about headless books. Yes, I noticed <laughs> I that. I know. Um, and almost every Meg Cabot novel is on there. I love Meg Cabot. I've read almost all of her adult books that she's ever written with the exception of the Underworld series because I didn't care for that one very much. Um, but this is one of her YA novels, Pants on Fire. It features in the tiny circle our lovely heroine and hero clutching at each other's parts. And then on the back you get the expanded view in case you were wondering what they look like up close. Pants on Fire is about a 
high school girl who lives in a small town in, I think it's Maine. It's one of the like small towns on a seaboard. And she's running for the annual Quahog Princess, which is the like Quahog. Quahog. Little shrimpy things. Are they shrimps? They're yeah, well I think a Quahog, I'm like family guy. So yeah. she's running for Quahog Princess. Um, and she has a secret past in which her and some classmates wrote slanderous things about one of their other classmates on a wall when they were younger, and all of a sudden, this classmate rolls back into town, and his name is Tom Tommy Sullivan, and he's become kind of a hottie with a body. Our main character, Katie, is convinced he's come back for revenge, um, but shenanigans ensue, and she ends up discovering more about Mr. Tommy Sullivan than she previously thought. You know, charming Meg Cabot style. She's always really sassy. She's got great, fun main characters and fairly clean stuff. And I highly recommend it. It is a standalone. She does write a lot of series, but this one's a standalone novel. So enjoy. My book is uh, See No Color by Shannon Gibney. And I had the great honor of meeting Ms. Shannon Gibney. I picked this book it's not technically handless, but we're covering up this person's eyeballs, and it's pretty, mostly hair. <laughs> it is. I would say the ball is probably strategically placed to cover the windows to exactly. the soul, maybe? Exactly, yes. Yeah. The story is about Alex, a biracial adoptee. She has uh, white parents. She has got a younger sister who is biological daughter of her parents and she plays a lot of baseball but as she starts coming into herself as a teenager her body starts changing she's starting to see that people look at her differently she gets involved with a black boy oh and she starts to figure out that things aren't quite what she thought they'd be and I like that this book is a little bit open-ended the oh, story's really? not over when the book is over is it a, does it have a sequel or is it just left it's open ended? So far, I don't know if Miss Gibney is planning to write anything else, but this is a great standalone book right now, I would say. Highly recommended book. We need more books about, with diversity in yes, them. Yes, we do. About adoptees in general, mm -hmm. especially families that are biracial. Biracial. Yep. Excellent book. Pick it up. So you know color. Uh, the, to top off our headless books, I give you a book with lots of heads that have no bodies. This one is Queen Victoria Demon Hunter. This was changing published. Right. Really changing it up. <laughs> well, no, I love it. it. I think this is great. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, this was published in the thread that I think started with Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, where you take historical figures and kind of shift their history a little bit. So we've got Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and now Queen Victoria Demon Hunter. And it's the story of the life of Queen Victoria, who we all know and love from history. Um, starting in 1838, but as well as being a fantastic queen, she also hunts demons for a living. So, um... Is this her night job? Yeah. It's what she does when she, she takes off the crown and puts on her slayer's cap and goes to town. Uh, and there's intrigue and drama and lots of blood and guts. So, if you're looking at a little, a little fun historical avenue that you may not have perviewed before, Queen Victoria Demon Hunter, she loved her country. She hated zombies. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So now that we've talked about a trend that is waning somewhat, let's talk about one of waxing. Waxing trends. <laughs> Very simplistic style. Yes. With lots of luck coloring. Um, Usually very bright colors. Very bright colors, yep. yes. Um, can't remember the name of the book now. Where'd you go, uh, where'd Bernadette? You go Bernadette? is a good example where you've got the big face, but it's a very simple design with a bright back, bright blue background. Mm -hmm. And there's a, that has taken off as a trend, making that block kind of coloring and, and um, very simplistic style. So just as an example, I grabbed Darius and Twig by Walter Dean Myers off the shelf here. So this is a, a trend that we are seeing in a lot of genres. It's kind of avoided sci-fi for the most part, but... Sci-fi kind of flies its own flag where really covers does. are concerned, yeah. When a cover trend hits, it tends to take over a variety of genres, and it really runs with full force. Remember so. the Twilight books with the hand with of the, the apple? And then you started seeing, like, grapes yeah. on things? 
or like like the the YA trend with the fancy dresses and the headless yes. ladies, and suddenly everyone was a fancy. Even if the main character had n never wore a dress in the whole book, the cover would have a fancy dress on it. Thank you for joining us here in Librarian Corner. Uh, we are happy to be here for all your librarian needs. We'd like to thank Digital and Vellum and Crystal especially for editing this video and for having us on their podcasting network. And we'd like to thank Geek by Numbers and... The Hosmer Library, which we are filming in yes, today thank in Hennepin you, County. The thank Hosmer you, Library. Hosmer. We appreciate the beautiful wood paneling of your bookshelves and your lovely library staff. Um, and we look forward to seeing you soon, yep. and we'll come up with a clever theme song for ourselves. For next time, maybe. Uh, maybe. No promises. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dude, Voyager style. Oh. Okay. Have a nice day, folks. Bye. Bye. Mine also has a perilous journey in it. So that is us, and that is we, and I just, you go. <laughs>